Well, all this new circuitry sitting here on the desk would be pretty useless without a power supply. So that's going to be the topic of today's video. Greetings, the Asteroid 30 here yet again. We're looking at this uh, mixer preamp and, well, we're going to call it now 4-channel mixer amplifier because I've now got the 25-watt uh, RMS. I've got to stop saying that. 25-watt average and about 50-watt max. Uh, power amplifier module here sitting on the desk connected to a speaker protector unit only because this makes a huge thump when you turn it on. Plus the mixer is also connected to the input of the power amp. So the only thing missing out of this whole entourage of components is a power supply module. So in my CAD software there, I've got a version of a power supply that I did back in 2009. And I've just finished modifying it today to use a, a bridge rectifier as a package rather than separate diodes. Um, I also changed this connector from a three-way to a four-way, so it's two two-ways joined together. Just so when I'm using a toroidal transformer, I can connect the two um, center tap windings, or the ends of each winding that need to be, because there's four wires, remember, to the board easily without having to try and jam the uh, two wires into the one connection. Um, and so that's what I've achieved so far. I haven't printed it out, haven't made the circuit board or anything. Um, I'm missing these two connectors here um, because I forgot to buy them. I've got everything else I need to build it. And that's the bridge rectifier that's going to be used. It's a KBU-808, which is an 8 amp, um, I think it's a 1000 volt bridge, something like that. Um, just a cheap Chinese one. And um, these also allow you to mount a heatsink to the back of them if you want to. I don't think I'm going to need one considering the amplifier is not going to draw anywhere <laughs> over 2 amps when operating. So that's the order of today is to make up the power supply module for this um, contraption sitting on the desk. The only problem is now, I spent all last night hooking it up, I've now got to unhook it all so I can get the desk back so I can actually make the bloody thing. But yeah, it is what it is, I need like 2 or 3 desks in here but there's no room. Okay, before we make anything, let's have a look at what it is I'm actually doing. Let's uh, have a look here at the uh, schema tech. Um, here is our bridge rectifier, the KBU-808. Got two AC inputs from a 50 volt center tapped transformer max, that is 25025. Um, so a toroidal. Um, only because these two regulators over here, the LM317T and the LM337T respectively, they have a maximum input voltage of 40 volts. So don't forget the AC voltage after it's rectified and filtered is going to be higher than 25 either side. So you're looking at 35 plus minus here with this value of 25,025. So if you went to say a 30,030, you would have 42.1 plus minus, which is okay for these capacitors, not so much for these regulators. So after it's rectified here by this, this uh, bridge rectifier, going through two filter capacitors, 4,700 microfarads at 50 volts, uh, there's two there. And the ground is formed there. The two zero volt ramp, uh, connections here go to the center tap of the transformer. Uh, that positive side feeds the positive 35 volt for the high output for the power amplifier, and this side here is the negative 35 volt for the power amplifier. Goes into these two regulators, as I said previously, these are adjustable regulators. Uh, with these two 2K trim pots here. And what we would do is we would adjust 
both of these voltage outputs here so we'd have around about I'd say 17 volt max because uh, when you put that mixer preamp that I've got on it uh, and start drawing current it's going to drop in regulation and the voltage is going to drop down so we just set it at around about 16, 17 volt just to give the preamplifier a little bit more headroom that's all that's for and it's a standard LM317 and 337T configuration um, it doesn't have any flyback diodes or anything uh, two output filter capacitors are 470 microfarad each and about six, uh, not 16 volt, 25 volt because of the slightly higher voltage plus a dropper resistor and an LED just for power indication if you so want to use it and here's our circuit board overlay diagram which is basically what we just saw on the cab there just a few moments ago our two input connectors for the AC connections from the transformer bridge rectifier there C1, C2 large filters there a 35 volt um, plus minus connector there plus minus 15 volt connector there two regulators two adjustable um, trim pots and the LED output and that's pretty much all I've got to uh, speak about with this um, there's not much really to explain with it it's just a basic power supply so all its job is to do is to provide a high current side and a low current side and that's what its whole uh, entire purpose is to be uh, the only problem or drawback here is this link wire because of the fact that I got to have the zero in the center. I didn't have to have the zero in the center, but it just makes sense to have it in the center. I could have had the two ACs up here and the two zeros down here. Or, well, yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. I still would have had to put a link in somewhere. Um, but that's just what it is. So, I've already printed the artwork out ready to go on a piece of circuit board. I've just got to cut a piece of circuit board out, etc. Expose it, uh, develop it, etch it, drill it, protect it, play with my penis, and uh, then assemble it. And then finally test it. Let's go. Okay, I'm etching the power supply board now, and you may notice I've got another PCB in here. I'm re etching another version to the 25 watt. Uh, power amplifier module just on a bit of a better quality board whilst watching Judge Judy because the quality of these cheaper $9 I think they're 150 by 110 or 160 by 110 something like that yeah the quality of this uh, material is pretty brittle um, not even sure what that is it's not exactly fiberglass it's not Bakelite either but yeah it, I'm, I'm making another one just in case I decide to change it, which I probably will in the final design um, just because of that uh, trace that lifted or that pad that lifted whilst I was soldering it up but plus I'd had about three beers before I started soldering the board together as you can probably tell by the intro of that video um, so that was probably not a good idea um, I just don't have the parts to make the other power amp up yet uh, I need another PTC an RX E060 and the uh, splay terminal connections um, so I don't have those parts but I've got a new trim pot to put back in this one and I'm going to reverse it around in circuit like it is on the final design uh, just so this is a working power amplifier again um, nothing wrong with this it just wouldn't line up to the heatsink properly so that's the reason why I made another version plus I um, increase the size of the traces there these are only like 40 mil I'm running out of ammonia persulfate too so I've got like three teaspoons in there and I'm hoping that's going to be enough to do both boards but um, yeah that's the progress so far power supply module is coming on um, don't know if I'm going to get to drilling the power amp module I might just um, etch it and just let it dry and then stick it in something to protect it from air for a while and then drill it uh, a little later. Well the board is etched I'm just waiting for the um, protectant to uh, dry this before I touch it. It's still a bit wet. Got all my parts sitting there on the desk ready to go. Um, heat sinks, screws, hardware, uh, 337, 317, 240 ohm resistors here, 10k just out of shot, 
a link wire ready to go to filter capacitors, Suntan brand, 50 volt 4700 and two 47 micas at 25 volt. Now, when I go to assemble this board, I'm going to test it on DC, on DC power supply, but at 20 plus minus volts. Reason for that is that these capacitors are only rated at 25 volt each. Now, if I have this either installed backwards or it's wound all the way up fully clockwise, that means we can have the full adjustable output voltage of the regulators going into that capacitor. Now, if it's running at plus minus 35 volt, well, we've just now exceeded these capacitors by 10 volts and will completely blow the asshole clean off of them. So, for testing purposes, I'll be doing it at 20 plus minus volts DC just to make sure what the uh, 15 volt rails output voltage is and adjust it down respectively and then increase it to the full plus minus 30 volt of the supply so I know that it's relatively safe that it's not going to blow my capacitors. I need to mount these to heat sinks with some heat sink transfer compound in between. Um, I don't see the need for isolating them. However, I do need to see if I've got even enough space to put a heat sink in there. Because I'm probably going to have to mount it that way. Yeah, that one was going to have to mount that way. And this one that goes around the same way. Will that fit and not interfere? No, it won't. Interferes with that connector. Um, all right. So why I said is make sure I got the right regulator in the right place. Yeah, that's the 317. Uh, so I'll just bend these fins in a bit. Preferably try not to actually break them. 
just ever so slightly just to clear that connector a bit better so I might do it to the back of the device don't need an awful amount just enough to cover the back there and this is always very messy doing this attach it to our heat sink grab a screw and lose it <laughs> grab a nut Okay, I might as well tighten that whilst I'm at it. My pencil just fell on the floor. Okay, that one's done. Put him to the side. Grab my next one, which has got to go the opposite way. So. Probably a bit way too much. That's okay. Uh, it's got to go that way, so I'll grab a screw and a nut first. Put the screw in. And join the device up to that. Probably should put the screw the other way through. The other way around, I should say. That's better. I'll put the nut on this side. This stuff is messy as hell. But I love doing it because it's messy as hell. Okay, that's tight. Bend him back. That's just what you do to make things fit. Okay, now the other IC's turn, which isn't so important where it goes, but I'll put it at roughly the same height as the other one. Just looks better that way. Got a bit of uh, heat transfer compound on the legs, which always makes it fun to solder through. Because it tends to do that. Okay. Alright, that's the assembly portion done. Just move that regulator back from the adjustment. Um, so everything's put around the right way. So I can take him out of this. Alright, now I will insert some fly leads into my AC connection point when I find out where the bloody screwdriver went. That's brilliant. Always losing something here. There we go. So one AC connection there.
these Chinese connectors tend to sometimes suck. Ground or zero. And I need the other AC connection. Okay, and just to make things easier, I'll stick a couple of leads in the 15 volt output section just so I can get multimeter leads on there without having to hold them. The 35 volt ones I can just stick the meter on top of it, the probes. I'm not going to worry too much about the ground because I'll take the ground for the meter off of the ground over here. Just lost the other pin. Okay, now it's time to set up a power supply and pop you on the floor and then we'll set up a meter and stuff and have a look. Alright, everything's set up. Uh, power supply set at plus minus 20 volt roughly. I'm currently on the positive side regulator output and the meter's set to measure voltage. So let's turn on and hopefully nothing explodes. Well, nothing exploded but we've only got 1.2 volt there. Now if I adjust this trim pot, plus I can, that voltage should increase, one would think. the end stop so that's interesting it's not increasing the volts DC scale well that's not doing anything okay let me change the outputs to other side. Right, well, we're getting minus six there. Does this one adjust? Yes, it does. Keep turning it until I get around about 15 volt. can't because I've exceeded the rotation of the pot. So I'm increasing the voltage on the power supply. And 12 volts is all I'm getting out of it. Well, shit. Well, that was an epic fail. Absolute epic fail. And that's only giving me 1.2 volt. And it doesn't adjust. Uh, fuck. So I don't know why it's only 1.2 volt there. interesting the plus side is not getting any voltage at all the negative side is getting 28 29 so there is no voltage on the plus side 
which is kind of interesting. Okay, that's a little bit better. The uh, trim pot was shorted out. There was a solder bridge across the pot. What do we have on the high side now? Because that was weird too. Oh, I have to push on it a little harder. I've got 21 there. Okay, so that's all right. So, I'll turn this pot and see how high it goes. Seems to be peaking out at 12 volt, which is unusual. Uh, yeah, I think I'm using the wrong value resistor. It shouldn't be 240, it should be 1, 120, I think. Uh, I'll have to check that, but even with the uh, supply voltage up full, it's not going to make any difference to regulation. So the values of the resistors in there are what set our output voltage. So, I'm just going to have to have a quick investigation of something here, quick. Yep, I know my problem. They should have been 120 ohm resistors, not 240. I don't have any 120 ohms, so I'm going to use 150. Um, a little higher won't hurt it. However, getting those resistors back out might prove a little bit challenging. This is one buried where this regulator is. So, ah, fuck. Okay, with those two resistors now changed to 150 ohm, let's see what we get. So I've put the supply voltage back down to 20 volt, just to be on the safe side. And I've got more like 18 volt coming out of it, which is about where it's supposed to be. So, if I increase this, I want to see how far it can go. Right, we've peaked out at 18.9. I'll just increase the supply voltage. It's not changing. So I can back this now off to where it's supposed to be. Which I'm going to set it for about 16.5. Somewhere around there. Close enough. Up. Come on, up you come. There we go. That's close enough. Now I'll do the negative side. We're also at 18 volt. Back that one down to 16.5. There we go. That little supply is now working correctly. So I'll have to uh, make sure to make the changes on the schematic. So 150 ohm works fine and we'll get roughly 18.5 out of the regulators. So it'd be safe to assume you can actually connect this up to the transformer without blowing up the output caps. Yeah, so I'll make the changes to the schematic. I'm not going to hook it up to the preamp. I mean, I can see it's working. Uh, we've got uh, positive 16 volt 0.5 coming out of there negative points uh, 16.5 close enough got um, plus 31 volt there with the power supply up full and minus 28 with the power ups power supply up full um, albeit yeah my supply is not exactly tracking accurately but that's okay. But I know it's regulating correctly. Which is a whole entire point. So, two errors. I had a short across the um, potentiometer there, so it wasn't doing anything. But providing its uh, basic 1.2 volt out. And the resistance values, resistance values were wrong. They shouldn't have been 240 ohm. They should have been 100 20, 150. So, right, 
that's where I'm going to leave this video. Anyway, if you enjoyed it, please remember to rate, comment and subscribe below. And you can always follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description as usual. Anyway, this is the Astro 30 saying that if I don't upload a video beforehand, Merry Christmas for 2018. And, well, I hope to see you in the next year. Or in the new year, I should say, at some point. So, anyway, this is Astro 30 saying, see ya, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year.